Hi, today on Catherine Learn Stuff, I'm going to walk you through how to make this cute mitten countdown calendar. So let's jump in. So this is the third and final countdown calendar that I'm doing this year as I make three every year. So this is the final one. And if you go to my website, katherinelearnstuff.com forward slash mitten countdown calendar, you can get access to the full details of this, how to make this calendar, as well as you've got access to my free mitten countdown SVG, um, as well as my numbers SVG that you can get by signing up to my newsletter. If you download those files, you'll be able to follow along directly with this, but most of this you can just cut out by hand with scissors. But we're going to jump over to Cricut Design Space. If you've downloaded the files, you just need to upload them into Cricut Design Space. And then I've already got it downloaded here so we can quickly select the file and add it to our canvas. Now, when you import this into Design Space, you're going to notice that the size is really large. We don't need it this big. We want the height to be 10.5 inches high. And that's going to allow us to make a decent size mitten for our countdown calendar if we're using Halloween candies, which is what I typically use. Now, this file only has one mitten and four wall pieces. Each mitten needs four wall pieces to cover the full outline of the mitten. So that's one piece here that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this a few times. So we're gonna have two pieces here and we're just gonna quickly change the color of these to be brown so that we know that this represents the cardboard of our cereal box. And then next we're going to uh, duplicate one more and we're just gonna move it down here for a second so it's not in the way. And I'm gonna change the color back to red because we're gonna cut out a few pieces in cardstock that will be red. And this is gonna cover the inside and the outside of the cardboard so that we don't see that. So I'm going to quickly make one more duplicate of this and that way we'll have sort of a mitten for the inside and for the inside of our two cardboard outlines. Now each mitten needs four pieces of rectangles for the walls but the cardstock is actually going to need eight pieces so that you can cover the inside and the outside walls. So I'm going to quickly ungroup this and I'm just going to select these four wall pieces and I'm going to duplicate them twice so that I've got eight wall pieces for my red and that way I'll have enough to go inside and outside. So now that we've made all these modifications, these files are ready to cut out. So I'm just gonna select make and give you a quick preview here. So we're gonna have a bunch of these different red pieces and we're gonna have some brown ones as well. With the brown, what you need to make sure is that when you're cutting this out, that you set your Cricut to custom material and that you select cardstock, cardboard um, or whatever material that you're using. For mine I'm using cereal boxes and I find that flat cardboard works the best for this and then I set it through the machine two times. So just make sure that you're setting your parameters properly and you can adjust the page sizes if you need to to, to maximize how many pieces you get on each piece of paper. We're going to click continue and cut this out on our Cricuts and I will see you back at our workstations. The supplies that I need for my mitten countdown calendar are some red tissue paper, some red cardstock or just construction paper, and an empty cereal box. So I've got a surplus of these and these are sort of my favorite material to do for countdown calendars. So what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to take this box apart and I'm going to run it through my Cricut to cut out the mitten and the walls for the mitten as well. Before I put my mat into my Cricut to cut it out, I always make sure to put a little bit of painter's tape on the edges to hold my cardboard in place just because I find that the cereal boxes don't stick very well to my mats, um, even if I use purple ones. And so I find that just using uh, painter's tape to hold it in place works great. I've set my Cricut to custom, so I'm just gonna use flat cardboard on my design for this. So I've cut out with my Cricut, I've cut out two mittens, one for each hand, and then I've got four two inch strips for each mitten to go around for my walls. And I've also cut out some red construction paper that can be used to put on top of the mittens so that they're going to look red on the inside. Now this is optional, but I find that I don't like the look of the cardboard on the inside, so I'm gonna have the red on the inside of the mitten as well as I've got two inch strips to go around the walls so that the outside and the inside of the mitten will be covered in red and not looking like a cereal box. Now when we're doing this, you can either set the mittens up in this kind of a fashion 
or you can set them up in this kind of a fashion. So if you're gonna be using the backside and you didn't flip your design in Cricut Design Space like I didn't, having a red cover on it is a nice addition so that you're not gonna be seeing the cereal box while you're emptying out your calendar. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using my glue gun and I'm going to be wrapping my walls around my mittens and then afterwards I'll be putting the red color on top so that I don't get glue all over that. So quickly I'm going to start to put my glue all around the edges and this part is a bit tricky because you want to hold it up while you're gluing it into place. So let's get started. So now that my glue gun is hot I want to pay attention to the direction of my mittens and the direction of the cereal box design. So for the walls, I'm actually going to make sure that all of my walls are facing inside because then there will be less opportunity for the design to shine through the paper and my outsides are going to be covered in the just brown color from the cardboard. So when I'm gluing them on, I want to make sure that every wall is attached inwards. And I'm just simply going to use my glue gun and glue this together. So this takes a little bit of time. So let's get started. And these corners that are open, we're just gonna make sure that we glue those together. Now this short piece here, what I want to make sure I do before I do anything is I'm just gonna measure it so that I can cut an appropriate piece and I'm gonna kind of come up a little bit to make the mitten a little bit longer in this spot. Okay, so now that the one piece is done, I'm gonna flip my other one over so that I've got it facing the opposite way so my mittens are in opposite directions. But again, I'm gonna make sure that this is facing on the inside of my mitten. So I'm just going to add some more glue and keep working. Now that the glue has dried on my outlines, I'm gonna be gluing in the construction paper. So you'll notice that the mittens are a little bit off, so that's okay, I can just cut this with my scissors and make it all fit. They will be a little bit tight in some spots and loose in other areas, so some scissor action won't hurt with that. So I'm gonna quickly glue in my mittens to cover in the back, and then I'm also gonna be gluing on the outside, the red on the outside and on the inside to hide my cereal box design because nobody wants to see that. So let's get cracking. And for this, I'm just going to be using a regular cracking glue. For this, I'm just gonna be using a regular kids glue because I don't need to use the good stuff. I like to brush it around with the brush so that it kind of gets everywhere but doesn't leave too big of a mess. And now we're going to do the outside as well. And now that my outside is all glued, I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside.
So now that my glue is dried, it's on to the next step. So one thing that we'll notice is that even though we put paper on here, you can still see the ugly edges and we don't really want to do that. And the same thing here at the bottom. So we have a few options of what we can do. Um, I'm gonna be using one and a half inch thick ribbon and I'm going to paste, glue it on top like this to give it a nice edge and it's gonna give it a nice finish around the edges. If you don't have thick ribbon, some things that you can do, you can just use thin ribbon. It'll be a little bit harder to get it perfectly aligned, but you can align it like that. Or if you don't have any ribbon at all, you can still use paper that we used before and then folding it in half and then just applying it over the edges like so. So there are some options and that'll cover the top part so that we're not seeing those ugly edges because this calendar, when we're gonna be looking at it, we're gonna be looking at it from the front, so we want it to look nice. Now, even though my paper doesn't totally match, once I get it all attached, it should hopefully have a nice finish to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my glue gun and I'm going to attach this ribbon onto the outside top edge and the bottom edge of my mitten so that it has a nice finish and I don't see all this icky cardboard and glue leftover bits. So I'm just gonna quickly glue this on to my mitten. So now that my glue gun is hot, I'm going to start to glue this on. What I'm going to do is I'm only gonna glue on one side for now, and then once the whole ribbon is on, I'm going to glue down to the inside as well. And at this tip, I want to just go down into the center here and then I'm going to put another layer onto it on the inside so that it hides that one little bit of mitten that I got there. Now that I've got all of this on the outside glued in, I'm going to glue this in on the inside, but we're gonna just do it slowly because there will be some creases in here and we just need to be aware of that and this part will be done at the end. So we're just gonna slowly apply glue here and start to fold this in. And now we're going to repeat this here on this one side we're going to leave a little bit of extra on the edge so that we can fold it over and we're going to glue this down here as well. I'm going to snip it here. Now we're going to fold this piece here. And we're gonna glue the rest of it down over top. Now while this is drying, we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom here on the bottom edge so that we can go all the way around and get rid of this ugliness that we have here. Again, we're gonna start at the mitten part, at the thumb of the mitten, and go all the way around to give it a nice look. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to glue the back side so that we can have this all nicely folded. Now the back is gonna be a little bit ugly because we're gonna have some different bends and folds. So just be mindful of that when you're gluing this all down so that you're not speeding through it and then having some bunching coming up.
Now while this is dry, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to my other mittens so that I've got two matching mittens. Now that my two mittens are done, I'm just gonna clean up any loose glue that I've got around the edges. And the one thing I didn't realize when I was preparing this is I thought my reds were a lot similar, but now this red construction paper that I have underneath almost looks pink. So I might end up putting some snowflakes around the edges of this mittens to make them look a little bit less off with the red and the pink, but we'll see. So that's an option. If your reds are closer together, it should be fine just the way that it is. But for now, we're gonna put these aside and we're going to work on filling our treats. Okay, so now it's time to wrap my treats. I've got a piece of ribbon to wrap each treat up in. I've got two to three pieces of tissue paper for each treat that are cut out to about 10 by 10 squares. And I've got the numbers from one to 24 that you can get a copy of from my website or you can just make your own. I've set these to about one and a half inches in size so that they can be placed on top of each candy. But before I start to assemble them, what I need to do is I need to make sure that I organize my candy in the right order as I do several of these calendars a year and I need to make sure that each day has the same candy in each calendar so that I've got those organized. So I'm gonna quickly organize those and then I'm gonna start to glue these together. For my countdown calendars, I have to take pictures and document each number that gets assigned with what candy since every kid in my house gets the exact same contents in each calendar but they each get a different calendar. So I always take a picture of what I have and then I also put numbers on it so that I know what is going into which number so that I can make sure that I have the correct items in the numbers. Okay, so all of my ca candies now have numbers on them so I can make sure that everything gets distributed equally. So now that I've got all of my candies arranged in order, I'm quickly going to start to wrap them up and tie them up. So I'm going to, each candy's gonna get about two because if you put one, you'll be able to see the candy through it, the wrapping, and we don't want that. So I'm gonna do two wrappings and I'm simply just going to wrap this up. And the bow doesn't need to be fantastic, it just needs to be tied up so that it stays shut. Now what I like to do with these right away, I open them up. So I'm quickly going to glue the number onto each one right away so that I've got them ready to go. And then I'm just going to keep getting them all ready here. Now that all of my treats are wrapped, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around off the excess that I have here because they're just too big and this way they'll all be smaller and fit into my mittens better. So I'm really not happy with the color selection that I got here because I thought I picked this out better when I was planning this, but I guess my eyesight's going off on me. So what I've done is I've printed off a few snowflakes. So I've got two different shapes of snowflakes and I'm just going to glue them on alternating um, the two different designs just to give it a little bit of a nice look and maybe hide the fact that the colors are off so much and hopefully that'll make the side of the mitten look nicer. So I'm just gonna quickly glue these on and then we're gonna start to fill our treats. Snowflakes are on, giving the outside of my mittens a nicer look. Doesn't look so off color anymore. And now we're gonna fill this with treats. So I've got these two mittens and I think they're gonna go like this. I think this is how they're gonna go. So what I want to do before I glue anything in is I wanna just kind of squish my treats in here to make sure they all fit so that I have an idea of how they're going to go in because it's going to be a bit of a tight squish to get them all in and we don't want the glue for all of them getting stuck on each one. So they're gonna sort of put in like that. So now I've got an idea of how they're all gonna fit. It's time to glue them all in. And I just want to take out a few treats at a time, put glue on them and put them back into the box and then take out a few more so that I'm constantly just pulling treats out and putting them in to make sure that they all fit where they're supposed to.
now that all of my treats are inside the mittens, I'm just going to do a quick snip of some extra ribbons that are floating around and any um, tissue paper that's too loose. And then it's ready to add on my final ribbons to hang these up on the wall. So mittens are typically attached with strings to each other. So I'm just going to use some ribbon and I'm going to have it long enough so that it can loop over. But since these are pretty heavy, I'm actually going to use two pieces of ribbon so that it holds it a little bit better. So I'm just going to grab a piece of ribbon and I'm going to cut it out about 10 inches, so 40 inches total, um, just so that I've got enough to glue it in two spots. And then I'm going to have a, a knot up here so that this all holds into place. I'm going to tie a knot in the end here so that it's ready for later. Just a loop so I've got something to hang it with. And I'm going to glue two ends to my calendar. Now that our glue is dry, our mittens are ready to be hung up on the wall. And there you have it. Your mitten countdown calendar is complete. In the description below, I've listed out where you can get a copy of the files that I used in this project, as well as all the materials that I used. Don't forget to check out CatherineLearnStuff.com to check out my other projects, as well as don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.